fighting for our industry and protecting your business. We need your help. To do this, we ask that our realtors do three things. Vote, act, and contribute. Making sure that you are registered to vote is critical to help us elect candidates who understand our issues and will not place additional barriers to housing development and home sales. This is extremely crucial during an election year as all San Diego County residents will soon see ballots shipping for the March 5th primary in early February. We also need you to act. We need you to make our collective voice heard when we send you red alerts asking you to contact your elected officials and weigh in on crucial votes. And finally, we need you to contribute. Every realtor is asked to make a voluntary contribution to the Realtor Action Fund each year to help us fight issues such as rent control, new sales taxes, and point of sale measures that will threaten your transactions. I can't stress enough the importance of this fund and ask that each of you, before you leave today, please contribute a minimum of $20. This is a simple and attainable contribution to protect the industry that provides your livelihood. The Realtor Action Fund page of your digital program provides a link to click and make your contribution easy. This is our best opportunity as Realtors to show our strength and numbers and to back up our industry with the money to have a bigger impact on local elections and ballot measures. Continue to educate ourselves on new laws and changes in our forms and industry practices is an obligation of every Realtor. I personally commend you all for taking the time to elevate yourselves and therefore elevate our industry by being here today. On behalf of the Greater San Diego Association of Realtors, I want to thank you again for attending New Laws and 2024 Industry Update. We appreciate your continued support and look forward to continue serving you as a trusted voice of San Diego real estate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so that's our real estate broker. He's also a real estate attorney. And I think he's going to take us to another level. We're trying to break through some ceilings. And I do anticipate he's going to do an outstanding job in 2024. He has my backup, and I hope he has all your support as well. Hey, before we move forward, I want to thank some people who are here to make this day possible. And those are our sponsors. But before I thank you, sponsors over there, lined up on the right hand side, I, also, I always do this. I always want to thank all the food servers, the people who prep these tables, the people who serve us, the people who pour our coffees, the people who make this event. They have all these nice sheets on your table. It takes a lot of effort. So thank them on the way out too because they're extremely hard workers and they're well appreciated. Okay, so now let's talk about our sponsors. I'm sure Cleo's going to want to jump up here sooner or later because I see him over there. Whatever you want to, uh, we'll, I'm not trying to anticipate what's going to happen, but let me throw out some names here. We've got uh, Sean Simon of Planet Home Lending, who sponsored our TRE Compliance and Buyer Representation Training in the Residential Breakout Room. I want to explain the breakout rooms as well. We have Ted, and we all know Rancher Ted with his hard money. He's one of our silver sponsors. Ted, are you there in that line somewhere? Ted's probably out. Ted's working. Ted's, yeah, Ted's lending money right now. Uh, Jeremy Henley and Whitney Vaza with the Quick Fix, another silver sponsor. Derek. Barksdale with VA Rep is a silver sponsor who's taking care of all of our, our VA, VA loans and our veterans, our combat vets, so thank you so much. Tracy Hassey and Jana Herrera, which is my favorite sponsor because you guys are sponsoring the coffee today, which I needed. And I got this one. So thank you. Thank you, Tracy, and thank you, Brandon Escrow. You're doing a great job. Appreciate you. Mona Clemento from Old Republic Home Protection is another breakfast sponsor, so if you're eating, thank her. <laughs> and another breakfast sponsor is Javier Castro with Business Office Outfitters. <laughs> Ashley and Jared Hart with HMBD Media Video and Photography Services is our videographer sponsor. So if you need those headshots, you need some videos, you need some social media, which we all do. That's what we have in Ashley and Jared. I'd also like to give a, a few moments to recognize our two title sponsors and give them the opportunity to actually tell us a little about themselves. So the first one is Memo Cardona, and he is the CEO of Renovate San Diego. Are you here, Memo? Come on up, Memo. <laughs> Memo looks like we hired him from a modeling agency, but he's actually a hard worker and he is the CEO. 
and he's going to tell us what he does. Thank you. Morning, everybody. I'm Emil Cardona with Renovate San Diego. Uh, thank you, SDAR, for the phenomenal event. Uh, you guys do awesome events to support the aging community. Uh, so we are a real estate investment firm, local here from San Diego. To keep it very simple, we are a cash buyer. So whenever you get those problematic properties where you have an SD or your order situation, mold and the roof collapsing or a bad tenant that you need to get out, uh, that's where we step in. Uh, we take on those problems, we try to simplify it, keep it very simple. You know, so your seller can walk away with money and we take on the headache. Uh, the beauty of it, um, you're able to represent us. And then once we're done with the remodeling, we, we do take ownership of the property, we remodel the property, and then once it's ready, it goes right back out to you guys, for you guys to sell it. So everybody on our team actually is, uh, we've all done real estate on the retail side, I think almost 20 years. So we're very familiar when it comes to what you guys do on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's our responsibility to make sure we support you guys. You know, we really appreciate all your relationships because I want to be here in that 20 more years. So I want to make sure you guys are taken care of, you guys are doing more business, and vice versa, your success and our success. And it goes hand in hand. So something to keep in mind to kind of add value here. Uh, I know it's a low transactional market. You know, the markets, you know, we're kind of locked in still. It's starting to open up a little bit. Um, always keep in mind when you're doing your business planning, you always have a buyer with us. There's always, you can, if, if you're working on your business, you figure, okay, how am I going to get a buyer here? Give us a call. There's, there's always, I'm sure, a house that you drive by that's, you know, there's a hoarder there and then you're like, hey, I would want these guys to buy it so they can fix it. There's always some problematic property that escrow that you're like, hey, maybe my seller might want to consider a cash offer. It take, within 24 hours, we usually can give you a pretty solid cash offer. You can go to your seller or your listing presentation and say, hey, this is what an investor would pay. So always keep that in mind. We're here to support you guys. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. We're out in the lobby and we really appreciate being here with you guys. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate that. And now, let me see where I was. Okay, let's look at. Also, want to recognize Eddie Jabbar, who was a CEO of College Hunks hauling junk and moving. I'm sure there's a lot of hunks in here that want to get a job. Maybe we can listen to him and see how they can move furniture and flex your muscles. So we'll give him a couple of minutes. Good morning, everybody. My name is John Allen. I'm one of the owners of the College of Salt and Junk. We're going to be here with Eddie to talk a little bit about our business. Um, we'll start off with just a little bit of an origin story around our company. We were started 20 years ago in Washington, D.C. Our founders, Nick and Omar, were home from college one summer and we were literally hauling junk in the old church van. We get kind of image from your, uh, from your childhood. And Omar's mom said, You guys are like college hunks hauling junk. And they thought, Well, that's a great idea for a business. They submitted that business plan to an entrepreneurship contest and won. They won a $10,000 check to see. 20 years ago. Uh, fast forward another 10 years, they were on the first episode of Shark Tank. They did not take the deal. Okay. Um, and it expanded the business into a moving business as well. We've been featured on Oprah, on Borders, on Billionaire Matchmaker, uh, and a few other local programs. Uh, Undercover Ross is also January 2021 we were, we were featured on. Um, so where we really differentiate from your typical moving and traveling company is our honks. Honk stands for honest, uniform, nice, knowledgeable service. That's our brand promise. That's what you can expect when you when you call us. Memo mentioned hoarding. If you have a situation like that, call us. Anything that requires muscle, we can handle. Uh, and Eddie's going to talk a little bit about more of our services. Hi everyone, I'm Eddie Jabour. Um, just want to let you know what our services provide. So we are full service movers. Um, we do also move labor. A lot of realtors call us at times and say, like, hey, we just want you to move some stuff around the house. So really for realtors, we have a wide scope of of, of, of uh, services that we provide. We're also junk callers as well. Um, on that note, we're very environmentally conscious. We're, we're a green junk removal company. We donate or recycle up to 70% of everything that we pick up. So we really do our part to give back to the environment. Um, we also reach out to a lot of nonprofits to try to help folks out with just repurposing items that we pick up. Um, we're, like John said, we're a national company, so we're a franchise, so we are insured, we're bonded, uh, we're permitted, we're permitted by the Bureau of Household Goods and Services, which tells you that as a mover, we're background checked and we're fully trained. Um, 
and WFL are in terms of some of this. Um, what I want to tell you realtors um, is when you give us a referral, it's more than a VIP client for us. It's, it's like good to us. So um, we're going to represent you in the best way possible. So give us a call and we're going to make you shine with your clients. Thank you so much for having us and Happy New Year. Thank you so much. And that was um, it's extremely important that he mentioned two words, the license and bondage. So whenever you're going to move people, you want to make sure of that. I have a story when we were moving someone and they had this one lamp from Murano, Italy. I always remember that. And uh, the one thing they said be careful with was this lamp. It looked like a, a mushroom, okay? And I was talking to the client, I heard an explosion in the kitchen. And it sounded like glass. And it was. <laughs> and it was that. And uh, that just turned out to be like, I was trying to find this glass in Italy. And not good. So license and bonded, you guys are awesome. I really appreciate you. And also that you're green. So if, and, and, and everyone here, there's stuff. You have junk in your garage, you have junk in the backyard. So not just your clients, but for you as well. If you need stuff moved out and moved around, make sure you call them. And with all these sponsors, these people I've known, uh, several of them for many, many, many years. And we're like a family. They're the ones who are always here. They're always representing us. And they're always helping us. So I ask you today, before you leave, Please go out, and if you don't need their services, at least get to know them, give them your business cards, get on their database, and so when you do need them, they have all your information. So make sure you, you, you take your time, meet Granite Escrow, meet the movers, meet the hard money, meet everyone here, the memo, all these guys are good, they're always here every time, they're all, at all of our events, and we'd like to uh, help each other out in this industry. So once again, thank you guys, I really appreciate you being our sponsors, okay? So let's get around to the sponsors. Through today's program, our goal is to become as successful as possible as a San Diego County Realtor keeps moving forward and forward with more rules and regulations. <clears throat> For this reason, this event is not only to bring relevant information about new and impactful legislation that took effect in 2024, but also this event helps encourage you to both have opportunities and face the challenges shaping our business. And you know what the word challenges means, right? That means, oops, we got to do some stuff and we got to work around some laws and we got to maybe change a little bit of what we do and become more uh, realistic that new laws are going to affect everyone and how we can implement them into being successful and moving forward. One of the ways that SCR is best able to advocate for your business and through, and we mention it all the time, is a Realtor Action Fund. And basically what this is, because everyone else wonders what it is and where the money is going to, if you, if you wonder what we really do, we're an advocacy group. The San Diego Association of Realtors is an advocacy group. And what we advocate for is private property rights. And that's extremely important. That's one of the things that separates us from many other countries, is to have an opportunity to own a section of land that you're living on. And real estate is everywhere. The ground that you're standing on, wherever it is, is real estate. Real estate, if you look at anywhere in the world, people fight over real estate, borders are crossed, borders are crossed using force, borders are crossed using whatever. So everything's about real estate. So it's extremely, extremely important that we learn the laws, we learn all the rules and regulations, and, and, and that everywhere you step is important. And that's what separates our country. So we advocate for that. When I mean we, I mean the San Diego Association of Realtors, we have 29 committees that work on what's called a strategic plan. And that strategic plan is always to make sure that our industry moves forward and private property rights are protected. And if you don't know by now, private property rights are being scraped, run over, thrown out. And there's only one way to make sure that doesn't happen, and that's to fight. So the advocacy that we do is like a we go to Washington every year, we, we, we go to Sacramento, we talk to city officials, state supervisors, congressmen, senators, whatever title you want to give, anyone that has to do with writing legislation about private property. We can only do that if we have money. So when he says throw in 20 bucks, that adds up. And then we're able to fly out there, uh, I'll do it, the, the board of directors does it, the committees, the RPAC does it. 
And that's why we keep asking for it, because you can't get into a car and go if there's no gas. So we need some gas. Uh, we use a realtor action fund to fight destructive policies that harm the businesses, such as the transfer tax initiative, which the Government Affairs Department has left additional information about it on your table. San Diegans will soon be asked to sign a petition to place a transfer tax of 6.5% of the purchase of all real estate sales above $2.5 million in San Diego. That's referred to as a mansion tax. And we all know that $2.5 million is not going to get your mansion, right? I think that's like right up there in Claremont, you can get stuff for two point five. million. So it's not that far-fetched, okay? We don't want that. Can you imagine putting a 6.5%? And so uh, the measure is being placed on the ballot, subsidized by housing developers and activists. If the supporters get the required number of signatures, it will be placed on the November ballot, requiring only 50% of the voters. And we don't want to place it on there. One minute, gotcha. Okay, in Los Angeles, they tried to do this, and you remember, they were expecting $900 million in revenue. And what happened when that law went into effect? No one sold. And they ended up getting uh, about $55 million that year. So imagine the, the city of L.A. thinking they're going to get $900 million shoving this tax down for the mansion tax, and they only got $55 million, which tells me it's not working and people don't want it. But it's coming down south, and it's going to happen here as well. Uh, we know such policies have major negative downstream effects on real estate. The San Diego tax, which could add up to an additional $60,000 of cost selling your home will undoubtedly reduce commission slash listings, slow down sales, and push even more people out of the market. As an organized industry of professionals, we need to collaborate and work together to protect our businesses and clients we are so proud of. Join our efforts and show the community that we are fighting to make it easier for families to own a home in San Diego, but not more difficult. Together, it's our responsibility to invest in the Realtor Action Fund, our political action committee, led by Mike Chapman, who's also a board director right here, it has served to reduce and restart campaigns to push this advocacy. Every year we tell you this, and every year it becomes more important, because every year we're getting scraped for the private property rights. So whatever $20 means to you, just act like that's part of your business. It is going to specific people to go on specific trips. So please take that into consideration. We are currently and for an exciting and informative morning, in a few moments you'll hear reports from our housing chief economic Stephen Thomas, who will give us some insight into the local economy that factors into shaping San Diego real estate market. Later, we will have a chance to participate in a number of breakout panels on industry topics that are changing and evolving along with the market. And you won't want to miss, of course, Gov Hutchinson. Remember this guy, isn't it? His actual name is Gov. For years, I thought he was a governor. <laughs> and I know some of you did too. It's like, the governor's coming. That's, that's why we keep getting him over, because we figured, hey, the governor's here, I'm coming. But that's his name, and we all know him. I've seen him so many times. He speaks all over for the National Association of Realtors, the California Association of Realtors. He has an impeccable background, and he's going to talk about the new laws. Let me see where I'm at. OK, so. Uh, Stephen Thomas also, let me talk about him more, uh, the Chief Economics and Reports on Housing. He started in 2004 to provide the most in-depth real estate market information in Southern California. His work has been highly utilized by conservatives and real estate professionals alike and widely published in the San Diego Union Tribune, the LA Times, the Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, USA Today, and all the major TV news networks. Stephen will provide a comprehensive look at the most up-to-date trends of our local market and offer his insights to 2024. So without any more delay, let's bring up Stephen Thomas. Here he comes.
So it gets the advanced tax supply from 10 million to 10 million plus. 5 million to 10 is down about 57%, and 10 million uh, plus is down 52% year over year. So uh, know that it will, it, is definite, it will definitely affect markets. So uh, you should contribute your $20. But we're going to start off with some fun photos because I'm about to dive into economics. Good thing it's the morning because when I do this in the afternoon, you will fall asleep. So here is uh, some, here are some fun photos. Thankfully, it was free, freezing cold this morning. My knuckles were red, but it wasn't this cold. So be glad that this is where we live here in California because that would be impossible to get that off. This is an MLS photo. They took about 15 angles of this, like as if this is an attribute of the house. People said it would be cool to live here for about a minute, and then you'd get tired of this sunken living room. Think a better Airbnb. And this was a luxury listing. Everything looks great except for this. And I don't know why they included this photo. Be bad. So this is the way this spring is going to work out for you guys. This is house hunting. Exactly. This is what it's going to take. Spring is going to be extremely busy, and I'll explain why in a second. I'm going to get into my introduction because a lot of you, who's seen me before in this room? So there's a few of you. So now you've all seen me. A lot more hands next time. Quantitative economics and decision sciences from UC San Diego is right here down the street. I was so happy to get off uh, a little bit of village ride. So 32 years ago, though, uh, 32 years in the business, Orange County native, Cap Valley High School grad, nine kids. You guys haven't seen it before because everybody knows that, but lots of kids. So, uh, matter of fact, I took uh, a cereal box to take home with one of my kids, the six year old, almost six. Uh, I brought the six on the right, my wife brought the, the two on the upper left. Thank you. We had them all the time. I adopted her, she adopted mine, and then we had this guy. Like I said, he's turning six in February, talks like a teenager, calls me bro. And uh, the guy in the middle uh, right, that is. Uh, our son, who graduated from Washington State University and came to work for me about nine months ago. So, pretty cool. He's smart. Let me have her. We don't have to clap. So I'm just giving you guys an idea of what, what's going on. Now, that, that girl right there, she's our oldest. She's 27. She's married. And she gave us this. Pretty cool. Aww. Now you can clap because I'm a, I'm a grandpa. There you go. I still have a six-year-old, so we're going by Pop Pop because that sounds better. Uh, we've been all over the press, like, the, like you were saying. Reports on housing data is our company. It's your local real estate snapshot. It's about driving home the strength and power of data. Because right now, if we don't drive that home to our clients and everybody we know, they're going to go find it themselves. If they go find it themselves, they're going to get lost. They're going to think there's a crash coming or a wave of foreclosures, all the godly goods that people say. So we uh, don't focus on closed sales data because uh, really that's a little bit in the past, right? Pro sales data. We instead there's a lot more to look through the windshield than there is that rear view mirror. So through the windshield, supply and demand, the available number of homes to show your buyers today is called supply. Demand is a snapshot of pending sales activity, like the last 30 days of pending sales activity. And expected market time is based upon supply and demand. When escrows go down, we know that the speed of the market slows. When escrows go up, the speed of the market uh, it gets a lot faster. This is not days on market. It's your place your home on market when you're opening up escrow based upon the velocity of everything I talked about, supply and demand. Days on market kind of stays the same almost all the time. It changes very little. Uh, our reports are used for uh, buyer and seller consultations, getting price reductions, getting buyers off the fence, stop talking about ridiculous things like crashes. Pete's saying, you can't crash if you don't have inventory. We need inventory in order for it to crash, like we did during the Great Recession and prior to the Great Recession. And then it's about just closing more transactions by properly setting expectations. We have reports that thought all over SoCal, and we now launched in the Bay Area. We also just launched in November the uh, Ventura as well. And uh, we're going to be hitting Phoenix and uh, uh, Nevada the second half of this year. So some of the most recent reports are scraping the bottom. Uh, that's because we're at the bottom as far as demand is concerned. We're only going up from here. And also the lack of homeowners uh, coming on the market, that's a bottom also. We're going to see more homeowners come on because there's a certain amount that come on every single month. And we've been below that. Well, the low is the low that we will ever see. And uh, we didn't think we'd get this low, but we hit the low last year. 
And uh, we have a split market between luxury and the uh, lower ranges. It's definitely different. You need to know which lane you're in. We talk about it within our reports, the luxury market, and we have the different price ranges. We'll get into that in a second. And a powerful beginning. Right now, where we began this year is hotter than we started last year. Remember where we got to in the spring was extremely hot last year. So what is that bode for this spring? It's going to be pretty hot. And uh, I'm a geek. Love this thing. I, I, I absolutely love it. I will listen to podcasts all the way home, all the way here I did, because it was nice and early in the morning and very little traffic. Uh, we do have an economic model we follow. It's a progression model because there's things that come out every day. Yesterday was CPI. And uh, reports on housing.com, that's where you actually go to subscribe. It's $15 per month or $150 per year. That's nothing. That's a cup of coffee for you and your uh, significant other. That's it. So you get the first month free. Actually, you guys are going to get three months free because you guys are actually getting it right now as uh, just a, a taste of it from January through February. Then after that, you will be on your own. So that's why we're offering the three months so that you can get it all the way through March as well if you sign up today. That's the card authorization form. There's more in the back uh, outside there. You, you can see me at the break. So I'm a teacher. I want to help you. That's really what it's about. So you can articulate exactly what's going on. Not only uh, you will become more knowledgeable, but everybody around you will become more knowledgeable. Your clients your prospective clients, all that good stuff. So I got a mortgage rate update for you. Look at that. Exactly. We had 8% interest rates. Who thought we'd be excited when it got down to the sixes, right? We are excited that it got down to the sixes. And actually, that was a favor for all of us because now, once it gets down to the fives, which eventually it will, everybody's going to be extremely excited to remember what it was like in eight. And now it has a five handle on it. There's going to be more homeowners that come on and we'll see a lot more uh, transactions take place as well. So we're in uncharted waters though. As far as the economy is concerned, economists like to say this is what it was like during this time period. So this is the way it's gonna play out. We have no idea where we are at completely. Uh, it was COVID that totally disrupted all charts and things like that. And people still talk about, it's like the 70s, it's like the 80s. It's like, they keep on saying that over and over again. It's not like any of that. It's not what we see in the data. The consensus was we were supposed to have a recession. And did we have a recession? No, we did not have a recession. Like I said, COVID really disrupted everything. And we had that 10-year, uh, two-year treasury that was, uh, that was inverted and has been inverted for a very long time and it hasn't led to anything. And that's because we're in uncharted waters. And one of the reasons we didn't have a recession is because the consumer, we like to consume. We are the best in the United States. We consume like crazy. I go to restaurants and it's packed. That's great. That's fantastic. That's what fueled last year and averted a, uh, a recession. Uh, jobs is really strong. We are looking at jobs, and I'm concerned about jobs. I'm only concerned about jobs for one reason: is because uh, we don't have enough replacement workers down the road, and it's going to be a problem down the road. Uh, the Fed's concerned about it for the reason that they don't want this wage price spiral, which actually costs us more inflation. That's why they keep bringing it up. So when we get too hot of numbers, we know how the Fed's going to react. That's the only reason why I care. Actually, I think the Fed needs to stop doing what they're doing and actually go down sooner rather than later. I think that they're they're uh, a little bit uh, off. They're what we refer to as old and slow. Um, con consumption has been off the, the charts as well, like I said. When the economy is too hot, like it has been, we have interest rates right now. This is the level we're going to be in, 65 to 8%. It needs to slow down further for us to go down any further than where we're at right now. And that's because the Fed, they are definitely out to hunt and make sure that the economy slows and they get that inflation under control. You see the idea why we call them hawkish? They are hawkish. They're out on the prowl. And uh, they've been this way since uh, September of 2022. Actually, it's August of 2022. They came out swinging and said they were going to inflict pain on everybody. Uh, consumer Price Index came out yesterday. People were all like, boo-hoo. It went up a little bit. Yeah, I don't really care about headlines. It's fuel and food. And I can you pull that out. It's just a basket of goods. And instead, we're looking at core. Core is right here. Core is continuing to go down. It will go down. Continue to go down. We know that their shelter index that they have is so old and so slow that this thing should be at 2% where they want it. And they know that. So right now they are overly restrictive. So they are overly, overly restrictive at this point. And now they've changed the tune. They know they're overly restrictive. Now they're dovish. 
So now, now you understand, hey, they're dovish. Now they're going to be dovish in their language, but when when it, the uh, tenure treasury and interest rates came down as much as they did, it became hawkish dovish because they didn't like how much it came down. So they don't know what they're saying, is what it sounds like. So uh, the Fed, uh, they changed their tune from September to December. Now all of a sudden they said that there's going to be three rate cuts next, this year, next year, or 2024 already. This year there's going to be three rate cuts. They did say one, now they said three, and that's where all of a sudden they're changing their tune, and that's where people said they pivoted. They really haven't pivoted until they actually start to go down, but they've changed their language, and now they're more dovish. And that's a green sprout for me. That's that green shoot. You know what that is? That's where you have a frozen tundra, and all of a sudden it's springs coming. That, that is exactly what's going on. This is good news. That's what I mean by the, uh, the, the green shoot. And that's because we already saw mortgage rates. We were at 8% a couple months ago, in October, a few months ago. And here we are at 6.72%. I'd rather play here than in the upper sevens, right? It's way better if an extra 5 million people can now, more than that, closer to 7.5 million people across the United States can now afford a home. Because it went down. And when it goes down further, that just adds to the buyer pool. So that's what we're all rooting for, right? And this king cash has been sitting on the sidelines waiting for the economy to slow and the Fed to, to change their language. They changed their language and all of a sudden they were in it. They wanted to buy 10-year treasuries and mortgage-backed securities, which is what they do when the economy slows. And then all of a sudden we saw it. That's the Himalaya. That Himalaya is 8% interest rates and it goes down. Why am I bringing up 10-year treasuries? Because the investor that's looking at 10-year treasuries is the same one that's looking at uh, is, is looking at mortgage-backed securities. And this is where we're at right now. This is as of this morning. It's under force playing right at 4% because we're waiting for the economy to cool further for it to go down more. And But we've already seen it come down from its top and that was because we started to see some cooling and then it went down further because the Fed changed their language. After the Fed changed their language, it dove down to where it is today. We saw that die in December and now we're at 6.72%. Look, it's the same uh, arrows. That's what I mean by you can look at the 10-year treasury and know what's going on with interest rates right now as you're sitting here. But wait until after during the break. Uh, economic headwinds, we definitely have economic headwinds for the slowdown that they talked about. When they had taken the, the, uh, the uh, short-term rate, by the way, they changed the short-term rate. That's credit card debt, automobile loans, and uh, it's uh, equity line of credit. It's not what we do in this room. What we do in this room already tells the Fed where they, we think that they should be. And then sometimes they change their tune and then all of a sudden interest rates go up higher or they go down lower. But uh, this is the, the, the short-term rate is what they control. And so uh, understand uh, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about when they change rates. And on the, on the left over here, this is actually the savings rate across the United States. We're not saving money like we did prior to COVID. We're saving less. And it's about half of what we did before. And it's at a low that we haven't seen since 2009. So we're not saving across the United States right now. You could say that's partly because of inflation, but we actually had excess savings from all the pandemic stimulus packages. But that's depleting too, and is less than 300 billion that's left. And you can see they don't have a lot left in the tank. This is for consumption. And uh, credit card debt is going uh, skyrocketing right now. And that is actually real. That's real. This, this I uh, downloaded the whole entire thing to make sure. This is spiking more than it normally does. Normally it goes up slowly but surely over time because things get more expensive slowly but surely. But then all of a sudden, this thing is skyrocketing up higher. So uh, people are putting a lot on plastic. And there's a lag to everything that the Fed has done. And that lag will hit. Just this fuse is a lot longer than everybody originally anticipated. And uh, there is a commercial uh, wall of debt. When you refinance, uh, uh, when you actually purchase a building and you put a loan on it, it's not 30 years and you own it free and clear. That's not the way it works. Instead, it matures and you have to get a new loan. And when you have to get a new loan, now all of a sudden these loans are a lot higher. And there are, uh, when, when they have to, when it matures and they have to get this new loan, some people can't afford it anymore and they walk away from the debt. This has already happened. Uh, Pim, Pimco out of Newport Beach, uh, they were part of a, a fund that purchased 10 hotels and they actually walked away from the debt completely once it was, uh, they had to finance it after, after it matured. So this is real and there's a lot coming, more is coming, a lot came last year, more is coming this year. So 
So this is this headwind that I talked about that causes foreclosures and different things like that in that arena. So as far as the economy is concerned, you can feel it's at a tipping point right now from everything that I just talked about. And something is going to break. And when that does, the economy in the United States will slow down a bit from being so uh, hot like it was in 2023. And when they do that, that safe haven is what? King cash goes where? King cash goes to treasury bonds and mortgage-backed securities and interest rates will fall further. And when will that happen? I don't know. It's your fish. I don't know. I'm not the best fisherman either, so it's a little murky. I don't know. I might see some fish. I don't know if it's going to bite, that type of thing. I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen this year. And my, my thinking is it's probably happening in the spring. Definitely, I think it's happening by summer, but there's still an off chance it could be later, like autumn. And uh, when it does slow down, we will go down further to six to six and a half percent. And this recession might not quite be a recession, more of a slow session type of thing, where only for three months do or for one quarter do we go down and become negative as far as GDP is concerned. And if that happens, we'll go down even further. And we'll see interest rates with a black hand. That could happen this year. And we think we're going to get to a five handle, just high five handle, 5.75% or something like that. But that will bode well for our industry for sure. Now, I just want to show you how hard it is to uh, prognosticate where interest rates are going to be. Fannie Mae does a economic uh, forecast every year and also does a housing forecast every, uh, uh, not every year, every month. I wish I could do a forecast every month and change it. That's what they do, they change it. Here it is right here, and I'm going to show you how they change it. They don't know what's going on with interest rates. This was April last year, right after we had the regional banking crisis. And uh, this was April. They thought that we should, by the fourth quarter, have interest rates of 5.7%. Do you guys enjoy those interest rates? Those are fantastic. And then projections for the end of this year was 5.2%. Then by the time they got to November, now it's 7.7% for the fourth quarter and 7.1% for the end of the fourth quarter of this year. And then they got to December, so they change it. Like I said, every single month, then they got to change it to 7.4% for the fourth quarter because the fourth quarter was done when they uh, put this thing out. And now they're at 6.5% for the fourth quarter this year, which my whole reasoning for rationale for showing you this is so that you know that nobody has a clue. This is basically it. Nobody really has a clue. But I painted to, to, uh, for you a picture of how we're going to get to lower rates. So uh, the housing market, we're going to talk about the housing market right here in San Diego County. The homeowners across the United States, homeowners, the homeowner stock is extremely strong with strong credit, with great jobs, with low fixed payments, which are great hedge against inflation and rising rents, and record capital equity. They can tap their equity and still have 20% uh, equity in their homes, and they're record, record equity rich homeowners. I think they have 50% plus. Uh, equity in their homes. As a matter of fact, there are more homeowners across the United States that are that own their homes free and clear than ever before. Which means that they, if something happens, they're fine because they haven't paid, right? And then uh, we're, we followed uh, normal seasons last year. We're going to probably follow normal seasons this year. That spring is the best. Then it's uh, summer. Then it's fall. Then it's the holidays, the slowest time of the year. The fewest homes come on the market, November and December, and people cancel their, uh, pull, you know, pull their homes off the market, that type of thing. And uh, then we head, head into the winter market. The winter market actually starts Monday, the, the 15th. It's the second week uh, after we get through two weeks, people are done with their, uh, with their New Year's resolutions. Yeah. <laughs> Gyms quiet down a little bit. You can now find a place in your treadmill. That type of thing is going to happen, and that's when they, they, they contact you and say, okay, we're ready, we're done with our New Year's resolution, we're ready to go see a home. That's what happens, and we go into our winter market, which lasts from the second week of January through the second week of March, and that's where we get a lot more demand. We, we get more homes coming on the market, but not as many as we do during spring, so we get actually more demand than we do uh, inventory coming on the market. So that's, uh, that's here to come. And we've been dealing with very, very low cruising altitude of demand as well as inventory supply. And that's because of the Fed. The Fed broke everything. They said that they were going to try to reset housing, and they broke it. They broke both the demand side and the supply side. They thought that they would slow down demand so the supply would rise, and instead, both sides of the equation are broken. They don't know what they're talking about. So uh, they didn't consult a housing analyst. Mm -hmm. There is a housing shortage. It's acute. It's very hard to be a buyer in this marketplace. And that's because there's a scarcity of homes that are out there. And this is uh, courtesy of National Association of Realtors. It goes all the way back to 1983. And uh, 
prior to the Great Recession, you're actually going up in terms of the inventory. And that's not normal for what is, it, usually when things are hot, which was hot back then, you get fewer and fewer homes. But people got into uh, pickles because they really couldn't afford their homes and they had to keep on relisting their homes over and over again. We did a lot of transactions during the, the initial decade of the 2000s. Then we hit that Great Recession. The Great Recession, we had 4 million homes on the market. And we could actually see it as early as the fall of 2005. In 2006, definitely, we knew that there was a problem. And uh, this is way prior to the Great Recession, starting in 2008. And then we went from 4 million homes to where we are today. Dodd Frank actually uh, helped uh, make it so that people actually qualify for their homes. Everybody's getting fixed rate mortgages and uh, now adjustables the way that we used to know it, that they would adjust on a monthly basis, nearly don't exist. And now we have 1.15 billion homes on the market right now. Now, prior, this is where we are right now. And this is where we were in January 2020. Each one of those hills is a year. In January 2020, we had the fewest number of homes for January ever since recording the data going back to 1983. Which means that we actually had, uh, had there's fewer homes on the market and there were a lot more people in uh, 2020. Our, the number, the population was uh, pretty large by the time we got 2020 compared to 1983. So you can imagine how acute the problem was in January 2020 prior to COVID even starting. And then once COVID started, it really disrupted things. Now we can't get back to anything that seems normal. This is the available number of homes. This is where we are as of January 1st of this or January 4th of this year. And that purple dot, because we have one point so far, we don't have two points, so we can't make a line. We have one dot, that's my dot. And there we are, January 4th, 2,376 homes in uh, all of San Diego County. Thank goodness we're not that orange line. That orange line is 2022. You guys had like 1,200 homes on the market. It was awful. But even right now, it's not that great. Because we went down 5% the last two weeks uh, prior to January 4th, since the end of December. And last year we were 20, about 2,900 homes. That's 22% higher than where we are right now. That's the blue line. And then where we were three years ago, the average is 5,283. It's 151% more. There weren't a lot of homes back then. That's 2017, 18, and 19. You look at prior to COVID, and that's when things were normal. That's that green dot. That was normal. So uh, today we're at 2,446. We went up 3% since, uh, since the fourth. And this is where we typically peak. We haven't had like a normal market. That red line kind of looks somewhat normal, but you know, usually it's a Himalaya where it goes up nicely and then comes down. That's normal. But we haven't had a normal market for quite some time because these are both all COVID years and, and uh, interest rates that are higher. And last year we didn't peak until way late. We normally peak between July and the end of August. And in San Diego County, it typically happens in July sometime. For some reason, actually, it was higher rates. Since the end of July, 7% plus interest rates, we got up to 8% in interest rates. We had a lot of stuff that came on the market that didn't sell, that would have sold if we had interest rates less than 7%. And uh, that's why we accumulated them on the market and we peaked late. So that's what happened. And where are we gonna go from here? From here, we're gonna go slightly, we think. We don't know because we have to see how much uh, demand comes. We could actually do what we did last year, and that's that blue line where we actually went down, which is not what I'm hoping for at all because we have no inventory. Now, people are hunkering down in their homes. They're staying put in their homes. I look at the National Mortgage Database through the, through the uh, second quarter of 2023. Uh, California, those that have a loan, 85% have an interest rate of 5% or lower. 69% have an interest rate of 4% or lower, and 30% have an interest rate of 3% or lower. So now you understand why people are staying in their homes. And these are actually the, the uh, it went from 89% to 85% last year. Why? Because we started selling homes to people and uh, they were getting higher interest rates. Now, that 30% to 3% or lower, those people are never moving. I can show you. Okay, uh, how many people have an interest rate of 3% or lower in this room? Keep your hand up if, you think, if you're thinking about moving for the next couple of years. <laughs> well, there's one hand. Two, three, two, two hands. Go see a realtor. But it's very few of them. <laughs> this is the number of homes coming on the market on a monthly basis compared to the three-year average. Every single, the three-year average is 2017, 18, 19, when things are normal because we take, stick the same number of homes on the market. May is the, is the month where we stick the most homes on the market. Initial COVID lockdown, we were missing 
4,954 cell signs, down 9%. In 2022, we were missing 13,754 cell signs, down 26%. In 2023, you guys were number one, 24,300 missing four cell signs, down 46%. That's a lot of four cell signs. And now you understand what the issue is. The issue is interest rates are too high and it's precluding people from placing their homes on the market. What will unwind this? Lower rates. And it's 23% of all uh, of, of uh, all homeowners want to move within the next three years. That's the highest ever. And that was through a uh, Zillow study. Sorry, I said Zillow. But they have good economists there. And San Diego, this just shows you. Each the, Up at the top is prior to COVID. Below the, the red, green, and orange and all that stuff is after COVID or during COVID. And this is where we are right now. You can see that blue line was last year, 2023. But now it's meeting where it was in 2022, which means we've established a bottom. It's only up from here. This year, we're going to see what I refer to as green shoots. This is going to be a green shoot this year, and I'm going to be talking about it in my reports. And uh, because we're going to get more homeowners coming on the market. Low demand. Is we have low inventory, we have low demand. And that's because of this. This rates impact on affordability. If you want 20% down and $4,000 per month, just principal and interest, you're looking at 8%. We were at $681,000 a house. That's it. $4,000 per month. Well, today it's getting closer towards 6.5%. Right, right, you know, not quite there. But if you pay a little bit of points, absolutely. $791,250. Do you see the difference already? And then you can see if we get into the fives, which I think we can do, you can see at five and a half percent, you're at 880,000. You just added $200,000 in purchasing power and a lot more people can now afford to own them. That is the point of the slide. Three and a quarter, I put this on there because that was January of 2022. We were at $1,150,000. Do you guys understand what happened in 2022? It messed with all of our collective brains. Now we're used to these higher rates, and when they come down, things look a lot better. So uh, that's why we have 8% interest rates, and it's going to help out. By the way, with 8% interest rates, uh, the United States is very unaffordable. This is the national payment to income ratio. It's really high. Monthly incomes are being loaded to if you are going to purchase a home. It's the highest going back to the 1980s. In Southern California, it's the highest ever. I want you to know that this is the most unaffordable the houses were in October when we hit 8%. And uh, this is San Diego County demand. This is a snapshot of 30 days of pending sales activity. And you can see right here that this is, I'm pointing to 2023, it's a little muted. And this is the purple dot. This is the start of this year. It's January 4th. We were at 1,077, down 19% or down 258 pending sales in the prior two week period of time. And last year we were at 1144, very close, 67 pending sales more. So it's very close. This too will be a green shoot, where we're going to see more pending sales this year as we have more homeowners come on the market. Especially in San Diego, you guys are number one as far as the homeowners not coming on the market. It is the weirdest thing. Uh, if somebody needs to explain it to me, I don't understand it. The three year average is 1,907, that was prior to COVID, that's 43% higher. That's where we should have started off the year. And today we are uh, at 1,109, up 3%, just like the uh, inventory. And as far as where we're we going to go, typically we peak between April and the end of May. And then we get into summer because we have graduations and a lot of distractions and things slow down a little bit. People want to place their home in escrow. A lot of families do and close during the summer. So spring is the best in every market that we track, including the, uh, the Palm Springs area, Coachella Valley. So this is where we peaked. This is where we peaked last year. Kind of looked like flat, like I said, cruising altitude. And where are we going to go from here? We're going to go up. And as we get more homes, this line should be higher than the blue line uh, for this year. We'll do more transactions. And then what we're dealing with in, in 2023 is inherent demand. There's always going to be demand. There's a lot of cash. There's still investors that want to play. There's, uh, there, there are millennials that are really rich. They've got money in both pockets. They have dual incomes. And, and they have the bank of mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, and inheritance and all that stuff. And you're saying, there's not that many people. There was only 1,000 Cells at the beginning of the year, it's pretty much all of them that, that we dealt with. So know that what I'm describing is called inherent demand. And the speed of the market, we were really fast during the spring, and it slowed down a little bit since the spring. And uh, this is the expected market time right now. You can see that this is inflation on the market when you open up escrow. It always peaks. 
It's always the highest on January, the start of January. So this is a peak, and it will go down from here. So you can see we're less than where we were last year, January 4th, we were at 66 days. But it went up 10 days in the last two-week period of time, we were at 56 at the end of December. And it just slows at the beginning of the year. Last year, it was at 76 days. So we are faster than where we were last year at this time. And it went down quite a bit. Three-year average is 86 days prior to COVID. And uh, we were at 31 days during the spring. Prior to COVID, there was only one time in 2013 that we were ever below 40 days in San Diego County and all of Southern California, ever. It was for a hot minute, a couple months in 2013. But we stayed there for two years during COVID, and we got there this year, uh, last year, uh, in the springtime. Today we're at 66 days because we have supply and demand going up at the same rate. And what happened last year is we had to, we started off the year, interest rates went down, and we had a supply scarcity, and the affordability crisis wasn't as bad as what it was during October, November of 2022. But then interest rates went up, and the supply got a little bit better, and it kind of became more of a tug of war as the year went on. But now we're starting off again. Supply scarcity and the affordability thing got a little better. We had 8%, now we're in the 60s again. And uh, we went from a hot seller's market to more towards a balanced market. We're going right back to this hot seller's market. And it's coming really, really fast. By the time we get to February, you guys are going to know exactly. By the time we get to the end of this month, you guys are going to know what I'm talking about. So where are we going to go from here? It's going to plunge. It does every single year. This will not be an exception because we have lower rates. You can already see it in the number of uh, apps that are out there. And this is one of my re uh, one of my reports. This is uh, the expected market time for every single city, including San Diego. I divide it by areas within San Diego because you, San Diego city is gigantic. It goes from uh, Tijuana all the way up to Canada. It's pretty big. So I, I take them to different areas for you guys. Put it on here, and, and I'm right now I'm showing you La Jolla. I can't read it either, so I'm going to tell you what it is. La Jolla was at 150 days last year. It's at 108 days this year. And this has to do with price. Understand that things are a little bit slower because of the price. University City, 163 last year, 120 days this year. Del Mar, 180 last year, 233 this year. Carmel Valley, 80 days last year, 57 days this year. Solana Beach, I'm just doing it right around here, 107 days last year, 95 days this year. And then Ranch Santa Fe, 236 days last year, 144 this year. Mira Mesa, 64 days last year, 40 days this year. Anything at 40 days or lower, I consider it a ridiculous, unhealthy, fast, speedy market. You're already there in January, which doesn't bode well for the spring. It's going to be really fast, really hot. San Diego went from 73 last year to 62 days this year. Downtown from 117 last year to 222 this year. The luxury condo is not as popular right now. Mission Valley, 55 days last year, 42 days this year. And then we have National City, 140 days last year. I don't understand that. 38 days this year, the hottest on this chart. So you guys get it. Yeah, woo hoo. It's going to be hard. You're going to place your home on the market for two hours on San Diego. I mean, you're going to place your home on the market two hours on Saturday. You're going to have an open house, and we will be collecting offers on Tuesday. That's what that does, yes. That's what happens when you're 40 days or lower. Luxury update, I want you guys to know, year over year luxury. You guys, by the way, congratulations. Luxury in San Diego County was defined as the top 10% of all of the counties, 1.5 million plus. Guess what? You guys graduated to 2 million plus. Congratulations. That's not yay. <laughs> now you match Orange County and LA. Everybody was coming down here. Now you guys are getting more expensive and it just makes it so people have to leave. It's not the best thing. Yay. Inventory is at 423 for 2 million plus. It's up, uh, it's no difference than last year. Up one, uh, down one from last year. There was 424. Demand's at 88. That's 17 higher than last year, 24%. And expected market time this year is at 144 days, and last year is at 179, so the luxury is a little bit hotter. You guys are the hottest, you guys have the hottest luxury market of all of uh, the coast. I just want you guys to know. Even right now, when it changed, it's 2 million plus. And this is the different ranges. You guys understand that below 1 million, it's really hot. In a hot minute, those are going to change. The, the 1 million, uh, uh, 0, 750, 750 to 1 million is going to be in the 30s. It's going to be like 30 day expected market time, and you guys, you know that's the hottest market. I'm looking for a detached house between 750 and 1 million. Yeah, everybody is. Get in line. Everybody. I will find you that house. So, uh, 
I have to change this. It says 1.5 million plus. We made a little oops, and that's because we just changed it. This chart should say 2 million plus, and this just shows you the number of closed sales. This is 2023. It doesn't beat 2022 or 2021, but it is higher than 2020 every year prior for 2 million plus. And uh, market overview really quick. Uh, yeah, this is you. This is what they expect of us. It's not an easy job. We have to crush it. Who are you guys going to hit? Hit a bunch of uh, investors is a big part of the equation right now. Uh, cash is a big part of the equation right now, as well as uh, baby boomers, knock on baby boomers' doors, because they, they have a lot of equity, and they're able to do things, and they are a bigger piece of the pie right now. But you got to do that, including going after your sphere of influence. Just keep on crushing it. You'll become that cream that rises to the top. You guys are here in the start of January. It's a big room, so you guys are the people that crush it. The other 14,000 uh, people that are part of this uh, board are just not, you know, they, we're not here. I don't know what to tell you. You guys are the cream, the rise at the top. That's what it's about. So just go out there and crush it. And then this is the United States. This is Freddie Mac Home Price Index. I don't like Kay Schiller. They're old and slow, like the Fed. And uh, this is the United States Home Price Index. I just like this one. Freddie Mac is the one I like to go with. It's up 6% year over year. And uh, down 0.2% for the month. It kind of slows down at the end of the year sometimes when you get that negative drag. And up 2% from the 2022 peak. So last year, we hit an all-time peak for the United States. It beat 2022 despite values going down for six months. And then in San Diego County, by the way, you guys are supposed to be one of the four worst markets in the United States of America, according to some hedge fund economists over at Wall Street. So uh, they shouldn't stick to their lane. Pete's sake, that was awful to even put that thing out there. Because I knew, because I looked at the inventory and said, we have a supply issue. And uh, sure enough, you guys were the number one performer in all of California and one of the top 10 markets in the United States of America. And then uh, up 9% uh, year over year, up 0.3% month over month, up 0.6% from the peak. You guys had an all time peak in the month of November. So uh, there's a shortage solution, we need values to come down. That's it. And uh, when values, uh, not values, but values. <laughs> Just kidding. I was looking at him, he goes, you have like two minutes left. I'm going, holy crap, I have two minutes. I'm going to start saying dumb things right now. So, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Interest rates come down is the solution. Sorry about that. Let's start that over. So there is a shortage solution, and it's when interest rates come down. Thank you. We're back on track again. A little brain too. Sorry about that. Demand will come up first, and people think that a flock of homeowners are going to come on the market. No, it's going to be the slow dial. Nothing's ever a flock. Nothing's ever a flood. There's not a herd that's going to come. They will come. It's just when, as interest rates get lower and lower, what's going to happen to demand? Demand will outpace the number of homeowners coming on the market. We'll have a crazy market. We'll have values coming up, which is why I've been saying for over a year now, oh, when's that going to happen? I don't know. Deep fish. I'll give you an idea when it's going to happen. But the time is right now to purchase. Period. I've been saying it for a year. And you know, all those people that said, yeah, he's just a cheerleader. Who was right? Who was wrong? Mr. Waiting for it to crash. So, uh, San Diego closed sales. This is, we didn't have a great year last year, down 23% year over year. Let's get the test. But how about the, please, for those people that want to work for closures, don't fly to Texas and take a one week seminar on it. Because there's only 13 short sales and foreclosures available in all of San Diego County right now. That's not a lot. And there are 56 prior to COVID, you didn't care about them prior to COVID either. We haven't got to prior to COVID levels. It's not going to be a wave of foreclosures. I already told you the housing stock is strong. And voting has nothing to do with our marketplace. It doesn't. It, the elections do not affect it. I can't find it in the data. Some you, know, you hear lots of articles about it. It's just people saying things about it. It's no, there's not data that shows it. And that's because when interest rates are in the fives, you have a buyer that's a millennial that's going to go, Something comes on the market at seven hundred eighty thousand, and you're like, "Yeah, you know, I'm gonna wait till after the election, to write off." No, they're not. They're not. So, the 2024 forecast we're here. Uh, yeah. This is where we're at right now. So, my 2024 concerns are uncertainty, sticky inflation. I'm not really that concerned about it. But enough people say about it. I hear about it every day on CNBC and Wall Street Journal. It drives me nuts. But so they've said enough about it where I gotta put it on here. Rates remain high. 
I'm not really as concerned because I've had us on there since September and rates have come down. Fed overshoots and causes a deeper recession. I'm actually really happy with what the Fed said recently, but I still think that they can overshoot. They are old and slow, like I said. They're very reactionary. <laughs> Labor market remains hot. I'm not that concerned. I like that. However, the Fed doesn't, so that's why I'm watching it. And then kickback trend remains elevated. That's homeowners hunkering down in their houses because they have really low interest rates. I don't think this is going to happen. This is going to be green shoes for this year. And then global turmoil, that's an issue that can affect markets and interest rates. In Washington, D.C., it's crazy. Over there. Yeah. In my opinion, that's why you think that they, you know, political action on this. My 2024 forecast is extremely low inventory start the year, about 2,500 homes. This is what I said in September, and that's what we hit. Normal housing season, spring is the best, then summer, then fall, etc., etc. And then distress rises slightly, no way. They're, don't go to Texas. And then luxury sluggish transition to normal longer market times. It's supposed to take at least four months to sell your luxury home. They do sell faster, but some of them don't price right because, hey, you know what, I don't really have to sell, you know, that thing. And then you have to take a six month listing. That's normal. Interest rates from five and three quarters to eight percent. Yes, that is the interest rate range because the economy could get hotter on accident, but I don't think it will. So uh, I have three scenarios. When is the economy going to slow? And we'll get lower interest rates between six and six and six and a half percent. And if I have, it happened as about 50, uh, five, uh, it's a 50% chance that it happens in the spring, and a 45% uh, chance that it happens in the summer, and then about a 5% chance that it happens during the uh, fall. And that kind of changes based upon different things that I'm reading, but I still think it's going to happen during the spring. And when that happens, we have a rise in inventory to only 3,500 homes in San Diego County. That's not enough. And then we have homeowners continue to kick back, and this starts to ease in late spring to see more homes coming on the market. And uh, demand picks up due to rates dropping. And then bidding wars start in the spring. And then rates drop below 6% during second half of 2024 as things slow down a little bit more. And then uh, close sales up between 16 to 23%. By the way, I see nothing but close sales up higher, no matter what uh, scenario I have. And home values rise in 2024 up 36% year over year. And then scenario two is during the summer, rise in inventory to only 4,500 homes. Homeowners continue to kick back, starts to ease in the summer. And then we have demand muted during spring, picks up in the summer. And then buyers cautious and not willing to stretch until summer. I mean, when I say stretch, it's kind of the dumb kind of stretch where they write too high of offers. Rate drop, rates drop below 6% at the end of the year. Then uh, close sales up between 12 and 18%, and home values rise between about flat to 3%. And uh, then rise, if it happens in the autumn, we have rise inventory of 4,500 homes. I don't think this one's going to happen, but there's, i got to put this out there because there is a pathway for it to happen. Homeowners continue to kick back, starts to ease in fourth quarter. And then demand muted during spring, summer, does not pick up until the autumn. And then uh, buyers are extremely cautious, not really willing to stretch. And rates remain above 6% for the entire year. For those that don't think rates will get below 6%. This is your. This is what is going to happen in major fund if you think that interest rates aren't going to get below six percent. And then close sales up between ten and fourteen percent. Home values drop between. I put one to four percent. It's actually down zero to three percent. I should change the slide. So if you want to copy the slide, you give me a cop, uh, copy of your. You give me your. I just give it to the this wonderful table right here, and I'll get it out to you guys. So I do a housing debrief. I'm going on my fifth year of doing it. I started it during COVID because people were saying dumb things during COVID. And I said, oh my gosh, this market's going to be hot back then. And uh, so it comes out every Thursday at 3 p.m. and it starts at the end of this month. I have a whole bunch of old ones, so if you want to send some minutes since I'm talking about a crash, some millennials talking about a crash or something, you can send this. this. Uh, go to uh, Reports on Housing on YouTube and you'll see something that I talked about crash and I put it all in reasons that they can understand. I do have a podcast because Brennan, my son, told me, where's your podcast? I didn't have one, so we did like our 13th or 14th episode that dropped this Wednesday. Let's talk housing. And that's what happens when you have a young kid that works for you. Reportsonhousing.com, that's where you go to subscribe. It's emailed out to you, and there's a bunch of links for you to repurpose. There's a video for you to watch to see how you do it. It comes out every two weeks. The next one comes out two weeks from now. It's $50 a month, $150 a year. You guys right now get this association through February, but you can get it all the way through March if you sign up right now today. So you actually get uh, that, that month of March for free as well. And the card authorization form is way in the back. That's it. That's all I have. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.
right, thank you again, Stephen. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mark Bretz. I'm our Government Affairs Director. Uh, thank you all for coming out today. Uh, we're just maybe about five, ten minutes behind schedule, but just out of respect for everyone's time. Uh, we're going to have a short break, and we have three breakout sessions at 9.30, and uh, another three at 10.15. So if you are interested, room one is going to be this room right here. This is track one. Track two is on this side of the room, and track three is just across the courtyard. So track one, the first round, is going to be on fire hardening and, and home insurance. Track two is DRE compliance, and track three is a commercial update. So that's at 9.30. Then at 10.15, this room, track one, will be um, housing affordability and homelessness. Track two will be uh, buyer representation in 2024. And track three in the other room will be an ADU breakout. So take about 10 minutes, get some refreshments, um, take a bathroom break, and then at around 9.40, we'll kick off the breakouts. So if you have any questions, just see if you have to have that SDER staff member, any sorts of directions, but go ahead and take a little break, and we'll start up again in 10 minutes. Thank you.